Hi guys and welcome back. Today I am going to paint this painting and talk to you guys about the process that went into it. I think that it's been a little while since I just broke down everything that I've done that goes into a painting and this is one that I was really excited to work on it. I really enjoyed working on it and I'm really happy with how it turned out so it'll be fun to be able to just talk about everything that went into creating the painting and the things that I was considering and thinking about as I did it. Uh, but this one is available at my shop, of course. I have the original painting as always, but I also have her available as an 11 by 14, which is the original painted size, and also a little bit smaller at eight by 10. So if you'd like to get a print shipped right to your door, then there's a link down in the description that'll take you over to my art shop where you can go check that out. But let's just dive right into talking about this painting. So at this point, at the very beginning, I had obviously already done the sketch. I'd already figured out everything that was happening. I transferred it over and I also did color comps to figure out what colors I was going to use. If you are a patron, I have a post up that has all my color comps posted over there if you wanted to check that out. But, but the colors that I ended up deciding are the ones that you'll see as I paint it, of course. But that was a huge step that I always recommend is to go in and plan out where every single color is going to be, every value of those colors so that it has the readability that you want. It has the impact and the look. And and I'll talk a bit more about the colors once we get more colors on the painting, when there's more that I can reference. But but I, I really enjoyed figuring out the colors that went into it. So that was the first step is making sure that it had that emotion that I wanted and it had that spark to it. And then I started painting her skin. I'm trying to get more into painting things in the right order, quote unquote, where they they always suggest that you paint the lightest things in your watercolors and work towards your darkest, which totally makes sense because some paints will reactivate and bleed very easily if you paint just right next to it. So I, I have been trying to do that mostly. I used to always paint the background first because it just helps really solidify the piece and it, it gets a large part of the color down quickly. But but I jumped in with the skin color. I went first with a very light wash of the lightest color that was going to be present in her skin, that highlighted area. And I originally put it down as a little bit too warm. I wanted her skin tone to be very cool and pink toned. And that highlight there, that original base color was much too yellow for, for that overall look that I wanted. but. But I was able to pull it back and add more pinky reds on top of it that, that did help lean it back over to that, that color that I originally had in my color comp and the process that I had figured out in my color comp for which colors to actually include for it. And recently I've been using a lot of a specific paint in my skin tones that I, I really love. It's called Scarlet Pyrrole. I use the one by M. Graham, but I'm sure the other brands have that. But when you put it in the, when you, squeeze it out of the tube, there we go. And from a dried palette, it looks really very orange, but once you activate it, it becomes this really beautiful warm red color and it's so vibrant. I love using it for skin tones. So that's one of the ones that I used a lot, especially in her blush area. And and uh, after I got that first light highlight base color down for her skin, I went in with this, I think it was mostly just this Scarlet Pyrrole red color, with maybe a little bit of quinacridone red mixed in. And I based out where the shadows were going to be. And that's where I let it be really just warm and saturated. And I really like this process a lot for building up the shadows in our skin. So rather than just going straight in with, with a very cool shadow, I, I kind of created more of a delineation for, for how it would go for the more base color of her skin, the final version of it. And then this like, transitional color as it became more into shadow and then the more cool darkest area of the shadow itself. And her hair was pretty straightforward. I wanted to be very careful and precise about anything that I did put in her hair because I wanted it to have this luminous white quality and I did not want any area to get muddy at all. So I was very selective with what I did include in her hair color. I used neutral tint, I believe is what it's called from M. Graham, which is actually more of a purple gray color and it worked great for really blocking out those shadows and it looks really really pretty with this. I also used a bit of moon glow for the deepest shadows. That one is from Daniel Smith and that one is a gorgeous paint color. I love it. I actually love using those two paints together because I find that 
when when they're being used they have almost the same color but the daniel smith one moon glow that one actually granulates really incredibly so so they they marry very well together where i can deepen and darken it up with the neutral tint and then i can get a little bit of granulation from the moon glow and i, I just love using it so i loved using it for her hair color here i also went in and added just a bit more of a of a lavender pale blue periwinkle kind of a shadow to certain areas just so it wasn't quite so stark and i did a lot of tests on how exactly to execute the background before i went into this one because i wanted it to have a very specific color of purple to it i also wanted it to have this really built up granulated look to it and i wanted to make sure that i got this gradient between the two purples just right so i, I did a lot before i got to this point but I, I figured out that I wanted to start off with the very first layer with quinacridone violet at the top and then blend it into ultramarine blue as I work down. And ultramarine blue, the uh, the one that I have, which I think is Daniel Smith actually, it granulates and it's so pretty and it looks so good. So I did that first wash and then I realized that I did not want to have to carefully paint around those little tendrils of hair and the little uh, tails, I guess, on the butterflies. So after I did that first wash, I went in with the masking fluid that I had and just masked in those really thin areas that sectioned off the background. And that's my technique, I think, going forward with using masking fluid is I will use it for little specific areas that will be hard to paint around or really slow the process down so that certain areas of a larger painted area will start to dry quicker. So for this, it will allow me to be able to just paint in the background much quicker and then I can get a much smoother wash and uh, it goes a lot farther. And I don't actually need to go in and mask out the entire character like I used to because most of that is really easy to paint around for the most part. And then I just built up more layers to warm it up. So I did a quinacridone red layer and I, I think I did another more purpley layer. And then finally I did one layer on top that I, I wanted to use to bring the saturation down of the background because I, I have these Luna Moths that are on the character and I want those to be very saturated and I want the eye to go to that point. So I don't want the background to be competing with that saturation level. So. I, I mixed up, I think it was a mixture of quinacridone violet, that neutral tint, and a little bit of Payne's gray, and I did a nice little wash over that, and it worked perfectly, and the background looks so granulated in person. It looks really pretty. I love how it actually ended up turning out. And it's a little bit of a sidestep, but I did want to have a title or at least a working title thought up before I started this piece. I'm trying to put more into the title so that they evoke more of a story and it connects with the viewer so that you guys, as you interpret the title and the piece, you get your own unique story of what exactly is happening in it and what could be happening in a larger world around it. So I've been trying that. I've been trying to, to put a little bit more spark and life into them. And this one, that title that I started with and I'm actually going to keep is Ill Fate because I have her tied up in this red string, like the red string of fate. And I wanted it to be that, that it looks like it could be more of a positive story to it. And, and she has more of a potentially positive or confident view of it but her future may not be quite as as easy or positive as as she might hope it would be. So, I don't know. It's just it's something that that maybe gives it a little bit more some some more imagination, I guess, to it. And then for the Luna moths, I wanted them to be just a little bit transparent just like the actual moths are, but I was careful with it because I did not want these to get too desaturated. I wanted them to be one of the focal points of this piece so that they would be really bright compared to the rest of it. So I, I did go in with a delicate hand for, for areas like the background behind the wings or the finger that would be behind the wings. And I think there was just enough that it does feel like it's a little bit more transparent to it. I had a lot of fun painting these, these moths though. That was maybe one of my favorite parts of this piece. Uh, eventually I do go in with a little bit of gouache mixed with plenty of water so that's nice and fluid. And I added a bunch of little highlight dots around the edge of the wings and branching up towards the the body of the moth. And uh, I love that effect. I think that it, it gives it a little bit more sparkle and life to those moths. Oh, and for the dots on the moths, I actually ended up using a toothpick. I did a lot of experimenting before I started this. And this by far was the tool that was the fastest and the easiest to get these consistent, perfect little circles. They 
or way easier than using a brush to, to get it. And I also played around with one of those like silicone brush tool things. And uh, yeah, the toothpick one, I might have to remember, I will definitely have to remember this little technique for the future, especially for doing like stars or very precise, concentrated little highlights on things. So yeah, I learned something on this piece. I also made sure to mix the string paint mixture really thickly. I wanted a lot of pigment there so that it would have the highest chance of looking more opaque once I painted it down and I wanted it to have this really rich, strong coverage of what was below it. And let's just talk really quickly about the color palette that I did end up choosing. So again, I had a bunch of different options that I put up on my Patreon and I really liked a lot of them. So it was, it was a bit of a hard choice, but ultimately I chose this one because I, I liked how the background felt more like this twilight time of day. It had the look that I wanted, or night, I guess, might be more accurate, but but it felt a little bit moodier. And I also liked this one because the Luna Moths were more of this like yellow lime green color, and that popped off so nicely off of the purple that was the background that also had a little bit more of this pinkier purple at the top. So those just really had this great complementary effect popping right off of each other so that that Luna Moth just really had a lot of electricity almost to it. I chose to keep her hair more of a neutral, that white, because I wanted those areas to just really have that impact. And I did, of course, the string that's tying her up red because I wanted it to be that, that connotation to it, that story that tied in with it. But I leaned more on the cool side of red so that it would tie in with with the overall palette, which is much cooler toned, I also made sure that I was mixing this, some of the same pigments that I used in her skin for that string so that there would be a bit of that tie in there. So there'd be a little bit more harmony to it. So anything that was more of this red pinky color was based in the same paints and that same kind of a red color so that, so that everything kind of flowed a little bit better. And again, I do have this painting available at my shop in two different print sizes, and it's called Ill Fate. I also have the original painting up there as well over at my shop. There's a link down in the description at the very top of it that'll take you over to my shop. And uh, yeah, I, I felt really good about working on this piece, and I feel like I'm getting a little bit more back on track with the type of artwork that I want to do and the type of imagery and subject matter that I actually want to paint. So this feels really exciting to be able to finish this one off and imagine what my next piece can be and, and try to figure something else out that I'm going to be as excited about. But uh, yeah, that's, that's it for today. So I'll be back next week with another art video. I do want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for your support. You helped me to be able to make these videos and, and make my artwork. So thank you. And that's it. So I'll see you next week. Bye.